Welcome back. Uh, grumpy old Grognard here. Uh, this is going to be a quickie because I'm spending a lot of time lately uh, getting ready for my first professional dungeon mastering debut. Well, I guess it's not my first, but it's my first online. Uh, I used to hang around at game stores. That's something that we used to have. Uh, and charge $5 a pop for people to sit at the table and play. Uh, that was back in the early 1990s. Uh, I haven't done any professional dungeon mastering since then, though, so... This is exciting, and I really want to thank you all for the support. I was expecting to get two people, maybe on a good day, three. I got five so far, and that just, thank you. <laughs> wow, so many people contacting me and saying, you know, can you play on a different night? Ah, oh, I love you all, I do. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Uh, I can't play on a different night yet. I gotta prove to my wife that I can actually make a little money at this, so. One step at a time, right? And I also want to run a kid-friendly game on alternating Wednesday nights for my son and his friends and any other kids that want to join us. Uh, that's not to make money so much as just to have an outlet to teach my kids about fantasy role-playing games. And that's going to be fun. It's going to be a series of one-shots. Uh, so something else very exciting is going on before I get down to the guts of what I want to talk about, which is actually not going to take long. Uh, but this is, uh, this is amazing. I mean, I told, back when I had a, a hundred subscribers, <laughs> right? And I did my 100 subscriber giveaway. Uh, I said, if we hit a thousand, I'll do it again. And we're well over 900 at this point. I mean, wow. So just so y'all know, uh, that, giveaway is still in place. I've still got the book. So once I hit Osric, once I hit a uh, hundred, a uh, thousand, a thousand, a thousand subscribers. God, thank you guys. Girls, mostly guys. Thank you. Really, this is really, I'm touched. Uh, anyway, um, stop gushing. Uh, I've got the book. It's Osric. It might be right here, actually. Yep. So I'm going to give this away. Now, keep in mind when I do this that your your profile has to be public or I'm not going to see it. So once I get closer to a 1,000, I'll put out a short saying, you know, go public, it's time, right? But there's this. This is, oh, I did keep doing that. There we go. Uh, this is Osric. It's my favorite OSR role-playing game clone. This is a clone of first edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, it is my sweetheart. This is my favorite book ever written. Uh, this particular version is the one you can get off of Lulu. This is the soft cover version. Uh, and I'm going to give one away when we get to 1,000 subscribers. So, again, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> I can't believe you've, you've helped me. You guys have just been so welcoming and friendly and... Everyone says, oh, you can't read your own comments because people are going to come down on you. Twice, maybe. I've had issues with people being snarky at me in the comments, and they left <laughs> as soon as I snarked back at them. So, you know, this has been really a fun experience. Um, again, there's a link down below. I've only got two slots left in the game. So, if you want to play a little second edition old school Dungeons and Dragons with the grumpy old Grognard, this could be your last chance. Uh, uh, again, I will continue to run this campaign, uh, and I, I'm more than happy to have more than seven people in it, but it's going to be seven people at a time, tops, okay? Uh, I, I will open up the, uh, the new adventures as they become available. Uh, first come, first serve to people who have already joined the campaign. But if there's any space is left over after that, we'll post those publicly and you can join. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit about Kyle Brink and his bullshit. Okay? I've been watching a lot of the interviews with Kyle Brink. And I gotta tell you, the guy has a knack for being a folksy, homesy, friendly, likable bullshare okay so let's just let's just scrape over most of it because 
I'm, I'm going to get, I, I could be on here for an hour ranting and raving. And I know y'all don't want to see that. But I do want to address one particular piece of bullshit. Maybe I'll cover another piece another time. But there's one particular piece of bullshit uh, that needs to be addressed. Uh, I was the vice president of a small business. Uh, we did websites for accounting firms. Great websites for accounting firms. Uh, and we got bought out. Now, I stayed with the company as a consultant, but I had to resign my position as vice president in order to finalize the sale. Uh, and that is when I learned what it meant to speak corporate, okay? Because speaking corporate is basically, and this is something Kyle is really good at, it's the art of bullshit, okay? It's the art of saying one thing and meaning something completely different, okay? Very distasteful. I did not enjoy this aspect of my job. Uh, probably one of the many reasons that I retired early was working for these big corporations is horrific. It's very dishonest. Let me give you an example that you are all familiar with. Official announcement. Dungeons and Dragons 6th edition. Oh, wait. No. We don't have editions. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons Sixth Edition. You can call it whatever you want. One D and D, whatever. Okay. Next to D and D, bullshit D and D. Okay. The next edition, the sixth edition of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, is going to be backwards compatible with Fifth Edition. Bullshit. Let me tell you what this means. This means that when they originally roll it out, yeah, it's going to be compatible, mostly, with 5th edition. They'll make a few roots rule changes here and there, because there's still some money to be made selling books, and they'll, they'll want to make a few minor changes so they can justify printing and selling new books to players, uh, and more specifically Dungeon Masters. Uh, but we're all well aware that this is primarily going to be an online product. So, it is true that when they first roll out 6th edition, it's going to be backwards compatible with 5th edition. But you have to look at some of the other things they've said. Very snip, kind of on the side. This is totally unrelated to our previous statement about compatibility. Totally unrelated. However, we believe the rules should evolve! <laughs> okay? There's your magic word. This is the corporate bullshit speak, okay? Sure, it's going to be compatible with 6th edition when it rolls out. But then we're going to start changing the rules a little bit at a time. And in no time at all, you'll see, in no time at all, those 5th edition books that you bought, the adventures, the, the subclasses, the modules, all that stuff is going to evolve to the point where your books are useless. That's the plan. And they've said it. They've outright said this publicly, that this is what they're going to do. Uh, in, of course, corporate speak, which is, you know, they said it in fluent bullshit. <laughs> right? So, yeah, so that's, it's not complicated. It's not a long video. I'm just trying to explain to y'all where D&D is going. And it's not going to be backwards compatible with 5th edition in the long run. It's just not. The idea is that if they can get you to stop buying books and join a subscription so that we can update and evolve the rules and you'll just automatically get the evolved and updated rules as you go, then you give us money every month. We get more money in the end. We get money from the players too. And uh, down the road when, you know, the rules have changed enough, we can just print some more books. Guys, it's still Wizards of the Coast. These are the same people in charge. Don't believe a word they say. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Play the game you love. Okay? If you love 5th edition, keep playing 5th edition. If you love 1st edition, keep playing 1st edition. Don't play 6th edition. Okay? At some point, this has to stop. The constant... Uh, all uh, At this point, 
in Wizards of the Coasts and Slash, first of all, let's stop being ridiculous about this. Wizards of the Coast is dead. It's gone. It's not a company anymore. It's a, it's a brand now, completely and totally under the control of the Hasbro Corporation. So when you're saying Wizards of the Coast, what you're really saying is the Hasbro Corporation. Okay. Now, um, at this point in their history, you're nothing. You're not. You're not game players. You're a wallet. That's all you are. You're a wallet. Don't, don't do it. Don't let them do it. Let's make this transition from 5th edition to 6th edition. <gasps> One D&D! Uh, from 5th edition to 6th edition. Let's make it... Let's make... Let's make the transition from 3rd edition to 4th edition look like a stroke of marketing genius to these guys. Okay? These guys really need to be knocked down a few pegs. Not a peg. Not two pegs. Maybe three or more pegs. Okay? They need to lose their shirts on this one. They really do. It's Hasbro. They can afford it. And by the way, the Dungeons & Dragons brand will be fine. Okay? And, you know, all this talk about, oh, but what about the precious game designers? They'll lose their jobs. They're already going to lose their jobs. Okay? That's done. It's a done deal. They don't need people to write books anymore. They need programmers. And they just hired 350. They hired an army of programmers. Dungeons & Dragons is becoming a video game in 6th edition. So if what you love is tabletop role-playing games, 6th edition is not for you. It's just not. Okay, so that's it. That's all I've got to say. I'm going to be on my way. Uh, I do want to remind you, please, 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 uh, don't miss this chance if you want to join the campaign because I've only got two slots left. Uh, we will see you soon. And that's all. Love you all.